third and fourth pick? Yeah, because it was always like that off laner they would they would try and run, but if Dro's got a, got any kind of like if she hits level six and with the VS setting next to it, she won't have an issue killing off those those skeletons. Like she's actually really strong at doing that. True. So you don't get the same kind of push power that you get out of the Wraith King Five when you've got that remaining. single target heavy damage that Dro can provide. And I'm still wondering how IG are able to hold in their lanes when Weaver's going to have that bonus damage too. Obviously, this all doesn't come early game. This comes once you hit your six, then you get the plus 26. Yeah. Good brood ban. That would have been really annoying for them to deal with. Even if they had one counter pick for it, it would have still been an annoying for this game. So, DK, or do you actually go something we saw earlier today, which was the Invoker pickup? For Windstrike? For Windstrike. Go, go for the Cloth Wex. Good EMP burn against Necro and Wraith. I think we want to see the last pick of IG first, because I think uh, Windstrike are just patiently waiting right now to, to get the last piece of information. Yeah. They don't have a lot of time, though. Only 11 seconds worth of reserve time to make that choice. What you generally want against Drowl is a hero that closes the distance, so she loses her aura, and you just threaten to kill her. That's why Spectre yep. is nice. Classic counterpick to Drow is Lycan, but yep. they banned that themselves, so you can't go that. Is, uh, is, is Slark enough of a hero if you'd consider him? I would not <laughs> I, I'm seeing a very heavy shake of the head. Back in the day, you would go PA against Drow, but I think PA will suffer this game. We have a really hard time. So how would you... Like, are you going to run Wraith 3, Necro 2, and then PA 1? That's the last problem. It's also the lane. Um, mm -hmm. Because then, then you're running a PA versus Weaver and Undying Harassment offlane. Because that's what these lanes should be. It should, be, v it should be VS Dro, Weaver, Undying, or Invictus Weaver VS Invictus together. Invictus Either way, it's a nightmare. Oh, they banned Huskar. Huskar. So they might want TA. I was wondering about Huskar. Like, Wraith King can hit real hard, physical, too. My, my biggest concern... And Necro. Uh, I, th I think what? Huskar would have been pretty good this game. Really? Yeah. Doesn't Necro oh, still just wreck him when, with Scythe? If he's low enough, yeah. Well, the magic resistance gets really high, so you need to get uh, yeah. Huskar very low, and then you can Reaper him. Uh, Gonna but have him on practically nothing. Five seconds remaining. I'm not sure exactly how low he needs to be, but he needs to be pretty low. The, the thing here for IG is I'm concerned that their support duo is just weak. Like, mm. how are they gonna win lanes with Rubik, Shadow Shaman right. support duo, Turn. and they're playing against a Drow yeah. laning? Is it Varana? Okay. That's not the closest distance here you're looking for. It's a, I, hero, it's a hero that can deal with Undying's Tombstone, at least, but that was the least of their concerns in Game 1. I feel like this could turn out to be a great Drow game. If yeah. you don't have strong laners, you're not going to pressure Drow a lot in lane, and then when she gets to scale and snowball her lineup, they could be looking at a very dangerous mid-game situation where these support Rubik Shadow Shaman, if they don't get much done in the laning phase, what can they really Five contribute in that mid-game? Mm -hmm. We talked all the good stuff about Null Field. Well, look at Windstrike. They deal physical damage in spades. So <laughs> it is. there's the Invoker. Quaswex would yeah. be amazing this game. It's great against Wraith King. It's great against Necro. It's great against Shadow Shaman. It's good against Mirana. Lovely pick. And it's a great hero, too, when you can run a Quaswex Invoker with the Drow Ranger aura buff up. So what you For lack sure. by not picking yeah. up Exort gets stronger, and you'll already buff up the Drow. I think if Windstrike win the lanes in this game, they could just run with this yeah. very quickly. This could be a pretty short game, like 25 minutes. But hey, Maybe we actually had the 15-minute GG that everyone's searching <laughs> for to get it in the Compendium prediction. At the same time, though, <laughs> got to be a little bit careful with, uh, with getting too excited for them, because they have no real frontliner for the Drow strat. They have Undying who can, like, pseudo do it, but he's still a support. Uh, and if IG do manage to do their laning well enough, even if they and lose the laning stage a little bit, their team fight is still really nice. They have the front liner in the Wraith King, the Shadow Shaman Wards, Rubik King maybe spell steal something useful like a Tombstone or something from Invoker, uh, and they have tons of damage. They actually have a lot of damage between their heroes, including the supports, but yeah. they need levels, and that's the challenge here, is to get them online. I'm, um... I, I'm feeling Windstrike for this I, game. I'm feeling Windstrike too, because this is a very comfort zone. Like, Silent played so much Drow Ranger in the early days of Dota 2. Like, Iceberg's Invoker. I just, Iceberg in general is just, uh, like, I was always looking for him to be one of the biggest standout heroes for Windstrike. And everyone else just has to play the right, the right way. Don't die too much. Keep their lane harassment up. Uh, what IG, I think, will be looking for in this case is to get the Necrophos in lane against Weaver. I think that's the best they can do. Because that lane Weaver should lose over time. Just getting out harassed, taking damage from the 
from the Death Pulse, and Necro just regens, and then you have a, an aggressive dual lane with Wraith King plus Rubik or Shaman, and you try to pressure the Drow that way. I think if you, if you put Necro in that lane, Drow doesn't actually mind that much. Yeah. Drow outranges him, she just slows him. If he ever comes in close, you can gust him away. The, the, the issue would be like if uh, Rubik gets a drag back onto the Necro. Like, Drow doesn't only bring that many consumables to the safe lane to, to fight. Well, yeah. How many does she have? She has six tangos this time. So that's a bit okay, then yeah, she's she should be fine. She should be totally fine. So it's always on a flyer that's going to stay with her. Iceberg will run in towards the mid lane as the Invoker that gives off lane of Weaver and VS, and it is going to be a dual off lane Rubik and Wraith King together. Marana and Shaman up on top, and Necro is taking the mid game against the Invoker. Oh, Iceberg, just take it, take it all. All these tips that do nothing, they're the best. So many machine jokes right now. <laughs> Observer Ward's down. That will block up the pull point. I don't know if Windstrike actually saw that, but that's such a critical camp as well. As a Druid Ranger, you always want this can to be pulled out so she gets as much experience out of the lane as possible. That's as much solo experience, too. She makes Drow Ranger really nice in this meta. The fact that you very rarely are in tri lanes. Yeah, but often she's not very good in two on two either, though, because, you know, she's a very weak laner and you can get abused two on two. But this game. Oh, no fear. Use the Wave of Terror over on Q. They're trying to contest for the runes. Non grata. Uh, they're pushing off IG. The arrow will connect from aggressive, but now. They just have to get out of this one safely. Non Grata will Shikuchi away. Another wave of terror, but no fear will have to burn through some of the tangos, but he brought nine, so. Winchak got when I got four runes. They actually got all of them? They got all four. How did they, they get the ones on bottom? Like so, that's Rubik and Wraith King. So they played aggressively with Undying and Drow into the Rubik Wraith King. And then meanwhile, Iceberg snuck over and stole the other bounty rune. Oh boy. So to get all four. That's a really, really good start for them. Yeah, that's a nice early money, Necro. Little bit of trouble hitting into the cold snap of Iceberg, but they've taken so much damage both ways. But that's why the salves are already coming out in the Courier, not to mention a couple of extra things. He's already got a Mantle flying out as well. Nexus S is forcing the issue. Fortifies the Creep Wave, so he can battle underneath the tower. And thanks to his death boss, this creep wave stays alive for so long. This is really, really big what's happening right now for XXS. He's winning the lane super hard. This is... Uh, did Iceberg just lose two range creeps as well? Like, he didn't yeah. get anything from the two range. He's getting dominated here. That's forcing down the lane. He's, he's pinging out. He's, he wants some help to try and come over. Bobica's causing problems on bottom lane, so Silence forced to fight underneath the tower. And I always want to fly cunts just zone out ZRF this way. But no fears made his way over. So Necro's on the move out, Iceberg has nothing really to help out, but maybe no fear's got enough damage. The Courier's on his way in, he's got himself a salve. He'll wait till he gets uphill, magic missile with a wave of terror, keeps the vision, and no fear. Well, he was dumpstering the lane, access S, but no fear takes the first blood solo and creates the space. That was very necessary. Now Iceberg is back in the lane again. He's still losing it on CS, but... In terms of net worth, the heroes are pretty even now. I'm kind of surprised that, uh, like, in that point, too, should Iceberg have fortified and kept his own creep wave alive? I think so. Because he, he had it the whole time, and now Excess is just doing exactly the same thing as before. Two more attacks would do it from Excess S. And Iceberg just doesn't know how to stand in this lane. This is terrible for him. Oh my god, if he dies to 5 HP. Calculated. He, he's, losing, he's losing a full wave at his tower. He's not even getting the XP right now. He's getting zoned off completely. And XSS can just stand his ground and take it. Iceberg needs almost permanent help in this mid lane. Tornado is oh. not even long enough. Waste it. The call snap with the tower. He may have enough damage. Our range will die in the meantime. XSS, he's, nothing can reach him. Even with these attacks, Iceberg, XSS can just south back up again. I know uh, Bobica was looking for a nice little gank moment on the bottom. 
Because he had himself a double damage rune. This lane, in theory, is actually really strong. The telekinesis into the Mortal Strike. So you lift the enemy into the spawn skeletons and then Wraith King stuns, and they just hit the Drow. I bet that's how they got the kill before. I was looking mid, though, but... Yeah, so was I. This is, a, this is a laning stage that's turning into a stomping from IG. They lost, remember, they lost all four runes. Yep. And now they're ahead of, on net worth, also losing first blood. That is pretty unheard of, level minute three, to be able to do that. And the lanes don't really change around. Like, Weaver doesn't become aggressive until, oh, until Drow has six. But while Bobica and SRF can beat this strong, Cold Arrow, slow down SRF. So I always want to flank us back behind the tower and away from the minions. But this is the this is the nightmare for Silent. Like he can't get close to the lane. Same thing Minions as Iceberg. Is under like it's seven two CS the twenty one two of mid. EMP tornado at least be able to create some kind of problems. But he's still regenerating it up. That's so good for Iceberg. He got three CS out of that. At least. Rune being grabbed by XXS, but lost the CS in his tower. He was probably hoping for another rune than Illusion. It's a pretty bad rune right now for this hero. Great wave pulls on again on bottom lane. See this time if uh, Silent cannot be dived. Nice observer what's up from No Fear, so Q. This movement is very much telegraphed to win strike, but then again, Shikuchi forward. Perfect. On the shackles from Q and the follow-up arrow and the Ether Shock. No fear got the first blood, but he's had nothing since then. And so far so good for IG, right? Imagine if they got some bounty runes in the beginning. They would have more than a one kick old lead. Now IG's gonna get all four bounties. Are they? Uh potentially arrow flies forward, will be dodged off. Q's in trouble, starts his TP, that'll be unsuccessful. Ambitious! <laughs> but he he got the bounty. So yeah, they, they take all four runes. Now nice SRF, arrows. looking to go off the Drone Ranger. He has to gust him back, a nice little push, but the movement speed is just so good. Another blast off cooldown in two seconds time, and thanks to the pickup from Boboka, they're in range, but Drone Ranger stick charges, keeping her alive, but the minions from Raid King are just way too powerful. I always want to fly, might be able to get a pick off onto Boboka, but nope. Even with a double decay hit, it's not enough work. And this Drone Ranger's life's a living hell. Another EMP tornado with a wave of terror, but XSS, he'll lose mana, but he's got eight one charges available too. Yeah, he has enough mana to go shred now, so he can he can shroud stick whenever he needs and get a lot of mana and health. He's actually gonna do that just now, so. Back up to 300 mana, just like that. Very nice. <laughs> Some would say very balanced. balanced. <laughs> but it's a uh, Ghost Shroud really makes this hero. Ghost Shroud and Reaper really make the hero. Bottom lane again, silent life. It's really not worth living with this Drone Ranger. Three deaths now, six minutes into the game. There's definitely diminishing returns from IG as far as the gold they get, but you get all the returns in the world when Drone Ranger is continuously delayed from level six. And this kill is good because not only do they take the draw out, but the skeletons stay alive. And that means that when they're pushing this tower, they have Wraith King Skeletons and Siege Creep and two heroes down here. And always want to fly, will not be able to defend this tower on his own. He might actually even get the coming here. In. VS is on the way, Drow Ranger is running past the tier 2 tower. Quick hit on the Mortal Strike, they drop down the Tombstone. As uh, No Fear can't get close enough for the stun. You can decay onto Bobaka, but that Tombstone gets very much wasted. Not to mention the experience underneath the bottom tower and the damage onto the tier 1 tower. Very hard to repair. No treant in this game. Q was mid animation on shackles and non grata oh, top. And he gets them all. Iceberg. Very low on life. XSS keeps the run going. One more attack. Two more attacks. We'll have to do it. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Where you have terrorists the wrong direction. XSS ran up the lane. And no fears committed pretty deep for that. Was just short of his magic missile because he threw that second wave of terror. What a big kill that would have been, though. A little four hero killing the level seven hero in mid. Solo. So oh, much XP. Shackles from Q. Bobica just needs to fade bolt. Doesn't have the sick charges for it. They're actually not getting him, no. But no fear will survive. And he'll leave me out to stack up ancients on his way through. Man, this is a sad draw. He's real sad. Yeah.
Helm of the... Wait, what? His Helm of the Dominator and Wraith King. Really? Oh boy. We have not seen this build yet this tournament, I think, from uh, Wraith Kings. We We've have not. Multiple not Wraith games. Kings. At least I have not noticed uh, Helm of the Dom build. So it's different. Something different from SRF here. Seems to be a great thing to enable a dive. Absolutely, yeah. It, they can tank up long for the skeletons and a lot of the times help close the distance for a second Wraith Fire Blast if you have the right creep. Q's moving nice down. for the consistent lane pressure. Silence seems to be rare, or like of two minds if he wants to stick around. Ungrada will TP in, Unko. Looks like the call has come in. It still seems very iffy if Windstrike want to take this, because Silent is not 6 yet. So this defense has to work. So Tombstone will be dropping. They're looking to kill the Wraith King. He doesn't. Okay, he'll level up Ankh right now. So it does burn off. And they'll try and kill him off again. EMP Tornado burn off this mana, combining with a call snap. Wraith King, this is a big kill for Windstrike, but they brought five heroes to do this. So XSS makes the most off the opportunity. Pushes to mid tier 1 tower. And Aggressive is, aggress is going to do the same up on top. I don't think that was worth it. I think they over overcommitted to this. Sure, they get this kill, and yes, he does skill reincarnation, but a five-man rotation for that one kill, while the Mirana is now totally free farming, and so was Necro for two full waves. Mm -hmm. uh, They'll be able to get the Observer Ward at least. Their scan pinged out uh, the fact that Q was going in a little bit deeper. And yeah, there it is. Instantly, they'll get rid of that deep Observer Ward. Small mercy, small advantage. Take what you can get. And now that they've left the bottom lane, SRF is like, okay guys, you want to go again? <laughs> you, you want to take four bounty runes? Another one? You got, you got 15 Radiant's seconds to do it in. True, yeah, the runes are coming up. Aggressive has cooled on an arrow, so I don't think he's going to try to steal the enemy bounty rune top, but he will definitely grab his own, and always want to fly will not be getting this. So this will be three runes for IG and one for Winstrick. Yep. God, so Silent is just begging for level six. Life is so hard as a Drow Ranger before you have that. Bottom tower has fallen. Nice haste room for Q, but he's not going to try and capitalize on Always Wanna Fly. Always Wanna Fly, stay away from Silence. He needs every inch of this experience. Well, you just saw new sentries being planted. Q on the D ward. Able to claim it. Shaman looks so funny with haste. <laughs> Oh, they get the shackles off too. I was trying to fly a so And Decay and Gust. Oh, create a little bit of space. There's support on the way from the Invoker. VS TPing in. You'll get the Tombstone off. And Snow Fear able to hit Connect Lay Sun and Wave of Terror. So Wraith King on zero armor at the moment. They keep the call snap going. Remember that reincarnation is such a long cooldown. They'll even deny the Tombstone. Nice Bro Ranger though. finally hits level 6. So bonus damage has arrived. And the defense is good. But Boca died too. He got run down by the Weaver. So, two good kills there for uh, Windstrike. Forced them out of the jungle again. Still though, aggressive free farming top. Hasn't really changed much. And the net worth swap CS. So. Into the EMP burn, as you said. Necro likes to sit the back line of play. He'll get the Ghost Rod off, as well as the Dead Boss. And with the help of Q, well, he'll be able to potentially survive another Tornado to fly through. Excess is so low on life, but with a start fall, a quick time lapse out. No fear, one more attack from Aggressive will do the job. Iceberg comes back out of his Ghost Walk on five. HP to fight for Pavoka, just Shikuchi's his way forward, hits him with the Fade Bolt, finds the kill. And it's not what Windstrike was really looking for. They wanted to finish the Necro, but incapable. And it's only going to get harder when he starts getting an item or two. He's buying armor right now, which I think is the good choice going for the Veil build. You can see him though the Helm of the Iron Will will help a lot against the next play because sure, this Invoker is dealing some magic damage with the EMP Tornado, but apart from that, it's really the physical attacks that are getting the job done. As long as he survives to get the Ghost Shroud off, they don't really finish him off. Another way Radiant's around it. For now, I think they're just happy that Windstrike are able to get some farm on the map and the fact that they're only Dyer's like 2,000 net worth behind. Like, this is... A bit of a dream, <laughs> if you think about it. It could be a hell of a lot worse. Judging from how the game started, it could be a lot worse and a lot better. Because they got all the bounty runes in the beginning. Mm. And the first blood, but then all of their lanes, they kind of got pressured a lot. Yep. So, smoke is up. They were out of range of the Dire Observe Ward on the hillside. And it's Windstrike rotating to the bottom lane. So SRF underneath the Observe Ward. Baboka, they know it ran forward as well. They want to rotate around to EMP burn into Tornado. Two zones up on the hill. So SRF can't do anything about it. He's got one charge that's available. It would have been enough to bring him in range of reincarnation. 
but he did not get it off in time. The stuns exist, but Boka still with Shikuchi. So he feels pretty confident to survive on this offlane. It's going to TP top. They're looking for Nongrata, but he's very far away. This move is not happening. Shikuchi down a range of the sentry ward, but they just commit the mass serpents. So IG can try and take this tier one tower, but support's on the way. Undying's arriving, no tombstone available. But Nagrana's trying to finish off a couple of these Serpent Wards. Stop the push. Double Decay will help with that. Oh, if Boka gets this ankle, this could be really good for them. Yeah, looking to wrap around the back with Shikuchi. He moves so quickly. And he wants to pick up over on the Weaver, so then they can get the arrow. There's nothing to block it at all. They connect! And with Starfall as well as Aether Shock, that's a lot of burst damage. No fear, try to actually battle it out, but there's still a couple of Serpent Wards, not to mention three heroes running right through him. Top tower is under attack. It seems like a very scrambled Radiant defense. Oh, Iceberg ran right into Sentry. Radiant they didn't have telekinesis. Tower. He could have died there, actually. Just ran straight through it, but <laughs> nobody stopped him. But because still Ghost Walk. And they're going to shrine up in a second, too. Very efficient usage, considering... How much all three players need to regen. I suppose looking for his moment in mid, but... Okay, no, there is no moment. No one else is there. Silent is still farming inside the jungle. Now we're Boca well, trying to find Nongrata once again, this time with a different invis. Yeah, that's that ghost walk. In close, and pick up. Nope, he'll go invis. Runs down into the trees, comes back up again, and now they get the grab into the arrow. Perfect synergy once again. We expect nothing else from Invictus Gaming, and I just love it how Boboko is just bringing this roaming support. It's been really impactful with Rubik this game. It worked out so much better than I thought. Before the game started, Money, I said they would have weak the support. The perfect. The tombstone from always on a fly. There's just no way for Q to run away. And aggressive. He leaped out. He's still got another one available. The magic missile will connect an iceberg's rotation over. Aggressive has such a good game. But they were looking for the bounties, which maybe they've been taking a little bit more for granted. When Stry take the bounties and the two kills. And Iceberg quickly TPs over. Again, this Observe Ward gives them information. The EMP Tornado, the Cold Wall, needs to be put up to slow him down. He's got a couple of one charges up, so if he wants to burn the reincarnation, he can do so. Still a very long cooldown on it. The Sun Strike hits. It does. And one more attack. They can't reach him. Decay is too far off. Very, very close. They would have been happy to just get a reincarnation there. But not enough. Yep. Mid tower does get denied while that was going on. So it's lost, but no extra money for Invictus Gaming. But they, they're losing map control win strike. You're 16 minutes in. I suppose your top tower uh, of IG is pretty much doomed. Yeah, they could have denied that. And they're holding on to it for now. And now it's si Silence who's fighting underneath a defensive vision. Observer and Sentry on the hillside. But it's mid smoke that IG are preparing. They may want an extra one, and yeah, they're coming back for XSS. They're going to make the move. So when this game started, I said it's really important for IG that their lanes, that they don't get crushed with this Rubik Shadow Shaman support duo. And I think it went beyond expectation, this early laning stage. So now they're hitting this timing where oh, we they have the Wraith King Blink Dagger. He ran in. They said three. They got the Hex off shocked as well as Scythe. See ya. The Gust will get onto three, but look at him run forward. Aggressive. He wants a piece of this. Moonlight Shadow's down, but the Sentry Ward is there. That's why Aggressive still very visible. Swaps him onto the Silent, which actually cancels the aura for half a second. Weaver will buy back, looking to continue to be part of this fight. As XSS begins to TP out. Is there a stun? Yeah, there is. And the Gust over on two. Iceberg took so much damage from this, but Silent just stood his ground most of the time as Nongrada is battling the rest of Invictus Gaming on the right side. It's SRF totally isolated. And what a team fight for Windstrike. Nongrata cannot keep up with Rubik. Because one, he's undying, and two, he's got Shikuchi. And that was only the one buyback from the Weaver, and they got a great fight out of that. That was a very good decision. They realized that IG were committing into a position where they, they kind of had no turning back. I think aggressive, especially, was very out of position there. Played it too, played it too far up. Arrows connecting. Nongrata doesn't have time left, but he's got 21 charges and Shikuchi. Kills off Bobica with the extra life he was granted. Value Ogre X. 
that made the entire difference. It actually. did. He would have died and not got a kill. It was like silence and more. Well, okay. I don't know if Nofia really intended to hit the shrine just then, but either way. This can start balling really quickly now for Windstrike. That fight was crucial. They get the Shadow Blade on Drow completed. And who's getting treads? Is that the Venge? Yeah, so Venge will get treads. Treads drum, almost level 12, minute 18 on their position 4. The Invoker got a lot out of that last fight too, and Weaver with the completed Dragon Lance. The peak that they're hitting now, they hit so hard with their heroes. Yeah. If IG are not on top of each other and get a very quick counterplay, their heroes just die too quickly. Yeah. It, it, it just seems so rough as well. Um, no fear. <laughs> yeah, Iceberg doesn't want anything oh, to do with help. that. Uh, it's, it's not what he was looking for. Mid lane in the meantime, pick up. Over on the always want to fly. He'll get a soul rip off. Gives him some extra life, but not enough. Now Silent Look comes the into the fight. And yeah, he hits like an absolute truck. He'll get the kill on Raking. Realize this was the moment to fight. <laughs> And he has an escape mechanism anyway. Top lane, here comes Iceberg under the sentry ward. He'll he'll dodge back. He saw IG moved and reacted to it. He's in between two sentry wards. The top tower, denial. Nah, missed from the Weaver. Aggressive has good damage with that Yasha Aquila build. Q's hiding under the cover of Moonlight Shadow. He wants to get the Hex, Shackle, Iceberg. He's got defense. Tornado only catches on two, then stolen by Baboka. And looks for his own target. Q, the Beatles are on him and no fear is going to arrive. IG know they cannot take this fight. Hit by both Wave of Terror and the Swarm. Fight's a little too hard. Mid lane silent. Blinks himself, I mean, in, in business himself away. But connected on by Dust, goes for the Gust. And the TP oh, out, the Gust needed to be able to connect to make it work. Meanwhile, Baboka will die up oh, on top lane. That was so close. That was a really nice attempt from Boka. He was super low, stole Shikuchi, got it off before the attack from Weaver connected on him, but they still had dust on the Weaver and he was able to run him down and get the hit off one more time. But yep, that's two big core kills for IG though. They got both the Invoker and the Drow. The Drow kill going to the Marana makes it even better. That's a completed Manta style. Excellent item against Gust. Mm -hmm. Can even be clutch with it and avoid EMP. Looking towards the bottom lane. Yule Scepter might be able to help set up for the arrow, but I suppose it's got such high movement speed. 502 with the phase boost activated. And Dro range is building up even higher. What's she sitting at? So she's giving everyone plus 60 at the moment on the field. I don't think we need to start the counter. But they look towards Roshan. All that bonus damage has to go somewhere. Into the big man is the easiest thing. A little bit of negative armor. Tombstone for protection. And Invictus Gaming, they don't have Moonlight Shadow just yet. It's still on cooldown for a couple of seconds, but it's already too late. Windstrike already have the kill, and Iceberg, he looks, he goes hunting. He's got the Aegis Immortal. He's looking for a couple of levels up, a couple of chances for that Spirit Vest, and they jump him in. But here comes the rest of the fight. The swap out. Tornado EMP. They're going to burn off everything this Wraith King has to offer. So no fear will die. And he actually gets the War Trap. No, they'll cut him out. And a way to safety, but Non Grata finds his target. Over towards XSS. Aggressive has to man to get rid of the call stamp so he can keep the run going. Great EMP steal from Baboka. Causes problems. Silent has no more cold arrows to work with. And these mass serpent wards are a pain in their butt. This feels like the exact same play from last game, where Windstrike get the Roche, and IG want to fight them. They run in, and they just lose the fight because they go on the guy who has Aegis. It's literally the <laughs> same play that just happened mm -hmm. in the second game. This time, I would say it's less crucial what happened, but at the same time, they also didn't even kill the Aegis guy. But at the very least... Wraith King's reincarnation did not go off. He was out of mana. I don't know if that was a good or a bad thing. Actually, maybe they could have fought with a second life, but that fight looked grim from the beginning. If they actually fought, they probably would have lost even more. I think so too. And so. the draw ranger, like, you know how, how heavily Silent got shut down early on? He's now number one on the net worth. The catch up is real. Baboka starts his TP out. They don't have the damage. They don't even have the stun to cancel it. So a way to safety, but the pings are coming. They want those bottom towers. They want that last remaining tier one tower from Victor's Gaming win strike. I think they're going to get it too. I, I'm pretty sure Invictus Gaming don't want to fight for these two towers. 
I'll probably give them both up and just push down the other lanes and accept this loss. <laughs> yep, but we'll see. They have taken a couple of Dyer's fights in the series that were maybe well advised. But... Questionable at best? Yeah. Gosh, look at how fast this push went. Yep. Ridiculous how quickly they took that. Sounds time. actually TPing off, but Nongrata can probably do this by himself. He's got a double damage room bottled up. But they look towards the top lane, so Sound Invis, if he hits the Gust, it won't be enough because Mirana still has the Manta style, so they need a follow-up stun to hold her there. Or some kind of swap to get her to jump in the wrong direction. Iceberg's just taking bottom lane himself. 246 damage, sure. It's a thing. The support's coming over. Moonlight Shadow up, Wraith King with his Blink Dagger wants to close the distance. They have Observer and Sentry available, so SRF runs through it, and they know. Nongrado will go Invis, they get the dust off, and then the blink forward. Looking for a quick time lapse, he'll have to be quick. That EMP from Rubik still stolen, and they'll get the scythe kill onto him. 95 seconds without the Weaver. That's a very long time for the Aegis to basically sit there doing nothing, because they cannot fight without the Weaver. Or don't want to fight without the Weaver. Yeah, does he? No, he's not even close to buyback. So, absolutely no way for this. Yeah, this should just be a bottom tower, really, for IG. They still have the Mass Serpent Wards on Q, mm -hmm. who is closing in on a really big level for Shadow Shaman. That level 15, the cast range on this hero is so good. That is one of the better support talents in the game. 125 cast range for Shadow Shaman. Did they actually try and defend it, or did they slow it down? Like an EMP Tornado from Iceberg should buy some time, but it won't buy 55 seconds. So there's Tornado, catches two with it, follow up EMP, call snap onto the Raid King. They burn off everything he's got once more, combining with the Spirit Vessel. SRF is having a real hard time running away when he's call snapped up. Bobica, he's the next big target into the tree line. Rubik has been an absolute pain in the arse, and the swap. They get the pullback onto the Necro. Defensive Fuel 70 can shroud as well as have the 20 stick charge, but not when Iceberg slaps the deafening blast at just the right time. Nice hold. And the tombstone placement here was really good. There's no way IG can fight into this position when they get jumped like this. And the, yeah, sure, Weaver is dead, but the Aegis on Invoker. Iceberg is really playing to his advantage in these situations. Just taking advantage of the second life to basically intimidate IG. If he doesn't have the Aegis, they really want to go for him there. But they feel like they can't make this play. Mm -hmm. And... They might not be getting as many objectives out of this Aegis as they perhaps could. They're getting kills. Staying ahead. Yep. That graph has done nothing but move up. So while the gold advantage doesn't look as huge, like it's 2.5k, uh, it's the experience which is which is at 6.5. Yep. They, uh, they're Inflated. getting a lot across the map. Inflated because of the Weaver XP talent, of course, but yep. Shaman has one too, so it, it's not as inflated as it could be. Yeah, you went plus 35%. I suppose, like, is there ever a point to get mana break? There is. Weaver? There are some games where you do it. It would be tempting, this game, right? You're playing against Wraith King. Mm -hmm. So but you then your, invo your Invoker kind of does all the other work you need to. Yeah, and he already built Diffusal, too. So, mm. that's... Well, that's a nice that's DD rune monitor. sitting top river. Someone with a bottle want that one? Silent? All right, we can just grab it anyway. So, plus 381 damage and 197 uh, base damage to a Ranger. I think it's time to push high ground, Send. Because you've still got the Aegis for a little bit longer. And I mean a little bit. It's really not long. Moonlight Shadow from IG. It's gone. It's actually gone? It is gone. Okay. It ran out a moment ago. Okay. Bubble. Well, well. Pushing high ground is still tricky, though. It's really not easy to breach the high ground in this game. Well, it's like IG know where wind strike are. They're not taking the fight. SRF spawned his boys. I actually thought he was going to keep them for a fight. Just gonna farm Ancients for now. Uh, now they smoke. I don't know about this then, because if you spawn these scout, they're, they're, they're AFK, because they got smoked. They're waiting <laughs> for a better day. They're just standing there. Oh, uh, okay. It sucks, because I think, I thought he was gonna spawn these If he spawns them there, it's to push out bottom wave so far that Windstrike have to go and defend. But now he doesn't have them for the fight. It kind of matters, actually. Like, that was seven skeletons that he can't bring to the fight now. Can He's gonna try. definitely make a difference. Always wanna fly, breaks the smoke, Wraith King looking for the target. As Undying starts with an earlier decay. Sentry wards are down, now Tombstone into the ultimate, and Necro quickly silenced up. SRF will lose his mana. 
He has his secondary life, however, but XSS being isolated in the in the back lines, and they want to bring him down. And Grana can do that almost by himself. And Invictus Gaming, this fight did not look good from the start. Yet still, they trunched down the road and got slapped. They brute forced that fight so hard. They fought into a team that was better set up and had 10 seconds to react. Wraith King walked into Undying, didn't want to stun him, kept just walking in a straight line. It's like, you know what? Not the Here we are. One, right? <laughs> Here we are. Cast your Tornado EMP on our cores. And, yep. That did not go over well. This is Rax, I think. It it's only be. 20 seconds, but they push so fast. This is an alacrity. Drow hits for 500. <laughs> hits for 500. <laughs> the, move, the attack speed as well is ridiculously strong. Oh my. That's the DPS going through the roof. IG have lost their melee. That was an 18 second window. Sunstrike, it's off target. Q is literally standing still. As they get the jump, it's going to be swapped stolen by Baboka. He'll have to use it to try and save the Mirana. That was not a good Reaper. Yeah, whatsoever. it went on a full HP Invoker. TP away to safety for the Drow Ranger. Always want to fly as well as Nongrata and just walk it out. Just like a stitch. This is, uh. Yeah. Invictus Gaming. I just wonder what you're thinking. They've made a couple of really questionable calls this game about what fights to pick. I think they have chosen fights that just didn't favor them two or three times. And Windstrike are gonna just take advantage of you when you do that. They got way too many kills out of this. They got so much farm that maybe they shouldn't have had after the laning stage that they had in the beginning. But they took the fights that were available and just made the most of it, really. This Quaswix Invoker has been super useful this And he's... <laughs> okay. It's forcing SRF to blink away. Yeah, everything just syncs up nicely for this draft. Weaver's cracked his 22. He went for the uh, plus two swarm. Oh, Iceberg top. He got yeah, lifted. This is a big pickup. Support is on the way. And they're having a hard time killing him off. Support's coming in from the south. VS swap. Iceberg, he swapped down and swapped around. He'll be completely turned around. But IG didn't know exactly where to fight. And no fear is sacrificing himself. It is a full retreat from Windstrike. Swap to swap. Good so, save. That is worth dying for. for yeah. Sure. Bobica's been really on the mark, too. Like, he's always had fantastic abilities. Like the EMP burn in mid lane previously. Shikuchi plays, oh, Ghostwalk plays. They smoked underneath the Observer Ward. Oh, uh, I think Windstrike might want this fight. Even 4 on 5. If they could heal up their Invoker beforehand. Well, he's and not, just fight on their high ground. He's not using his Spirit Vessel for the moment. Uh, that's a bit surprising. They have an illusion of Draw Ranger moving as though it may be the real one. Probably hoping for a bait attack. They're going to use the Shrine to get Iceberg up. Observe what? IG sees a lot. SRF just jumps straight in. He only now turns on the Blade Melt. The damage is high. They're waiting it out. They're just kiting him at the moment as well. Is there an EMP? Is there another control? There isn't. They just burn through the Aegis. Another Tornado onto the Necro. Send him up. Bring him back down again. Nograda has the kill. Another Scythe onto 100% HP. Hero. Silent needs his distance. He does not have it, but it will not matter. Iceberg is so strong when he's lacquered up by himself. And they are chasing IG into the trees where I believe people say it's safe, but always want to fly. Runs in close. They do get the earn off onto Mirana. So she'll fall. Q with the TP out. Won't happen. A triple kill for Iceberg. Boba will be successful, but he's the only survivor from IG. And barely. That tornado only just came off cooldown. I might sound like a broken record here, but that looked like another fight that IG just forced super hard into really dangerous territory. I get that they want to try to take fights, but it's just not the way to go about it. It's especially not when they're playing into this Quaswex Invoker that they just, they can't solve this problem. They actually just can't solve it. They don't have enough damage when he BKBs and the Necrophos is getting into really awkward situations where he can't get any meaningful Reaper off. That was another mm -hmm. fight where he tries to Reaper defensively. That's a really bad sign when that happens. And he reapers the hero seed, like, even controlling doesn't mean that much. Like, he reapered Undying after Undying popped all of his abilities. Oh, it was Undying even? It was Undying. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's ugly. It was Undying when he was, like, at 95% HP. Uh, that, that, that doesn't help. No, it does not. But you're right, they're forcing it, but it's... Like, when you force it, you can imagine them going on a singular target. But 
It seems like everyone in IG just have a different idea of which target they need to go on. But I also think when they, they choose this fight, right? They choose this fight where they smoke in and place a ward, but they don't have Moonlight Shadow. Because if they have Moonlight Shadow there, it will be a different kind of jump, most likely, where they can surprise Windstrike. But Windstrike just saw, saw the smoke break. <laughs> And that's a dead Roche. That's 557 damage on a Drow Ranger. Yeah. That they will now give the Aegis the Immortal to. Uh, Iceberg took the cheese. They know Iceberg can survive a lot longer than the Drow Ranger can. And she has been a pretty big target for the rest of IG. They just could never get the Necro down to her. The Necro has felt super underwhelming this game. Like, really, really underwhelming. Oh, Shrine's getting beaten down. Silent does so much damage, but even by the time IG want to try and fight this, it'll take too long. And they Moonline Shadow, but there's no opening they found. Even Radiant Sentry, what did Baboka get? Uh, okay, that took a while to reach him, but he, he, he's still Gust. Nice arrow, five seconds on Iceberg, they four start him away, and this drag sets a refuge further back, and they got perfectly hit by the Swarm, and still didn't get the kill on Iceberg! The slash was there, but he was 20% after the sight! Buybacks that have to come thick and fast because aggressive is getting ripped apart. Drone Ranger, the Aegis Immortal will break, but with the cold snap out, it's a triple kill for Iceberg. This Invoker is going ham. Has four vessels, he can heal up his entire team, and they can keep this push going if they want. Or they could just settle for how many buybacks was that? Uh, they got three. three. They got actually on <laughs> all three cores all ball back. All three cores, and all they lost was an Aegis and a Cheese. That is such a big win. And they now they give, Ice, give Iceberg an Arcane Rune and go back in and fight. And an Oxrine core as it looks, so all his spells will have like 5 second cooldown. That's pretty, that's pretty hype. Yeah. Don't think he'll spend that money now, however. Oh, he might. I don't think he has to save buyback right now. I actually don't think there's a threat that IG end this game, or take Rax even, if they get a bad fight. I think you just buy up here. What there is IG go. up to? Like, why are they moving as 5... Like, is it so someone could buy something at the secret shop? They need to move together because they're they're terrified. Like if they if they get jumped and they're not close to each other, we talked about it earlier in the game. The damage comes out so fast from Windstrike that they have to be in range to react for each other so quickly. I suppose that's the only place too with vision. Like the Observer Sentry Ward gives them some level of comfort. Yeah. Which they do not find in their other jungle. Yeah, but Windstrike are preparing now for the mid push. Top lane's already been taken care of. It wasn't even a hero that killed off the ranger axe. It was uh, two catapults that pushed him previously. And they see Bobica by himself, but you know Bobica's going to have escape, blink force, and TP with 21 charges. Just needs to relieve the pressure on the bottom lane. Starts his TP already. And on Gratis, too late. But they are super cornered in their base now. Very limited on options here, IG. They Moonlight Shattered. They're yeah. coming out. This is, a, this is an all-in play. If this one fails, the game is over. And they know it, so... They're hoping... They're banking on the Windstrike team being oh, spread out. Pick up. Throw down with the Starfall and the Scythe. They get the kill. Not Two bad. minutes and a bit extra change. Where the Weaver is down. Meanwhile, buff up a Forge Spirit and take out a Tier 3 Tower. Do they actually use the Draw Aura too? Draw Aura. Click, 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 click. Not happening. He just used it now. Little late though. Too late, yeah. That actually could have maybe been a range tracks. <laughs> yeah. They used it straight away. Well, they just go again. They've still got the aura up and running, so, uh, all right, here we go once more. This is why you don't need SD Luna. You just send in four spirits to do your dirty work for you. And the Lincoln Sphere is completed on the Drow Ranger, so silent. Defensive item for him. Wraithfire Blast, Scythe. Rather difficult to latch. Oh, this item could could be big for IG. They mm -hmm. just got an axe on Shaman. He's getting level 20. Q is actually really farmed this game. <laughs> for his team. He's, obviously, Baboka is way richer, but given the circumstance this game is in, this is a pretty rich Shaman. Level I love 20 when... Just, just off. Iceberg's uh, tornado lasts so long that he actually had trouble timing the EMP against SRF. Yeah, did he take... I no, didn't take the lift time talent. He took took the Chaos Meteor contact damage. Now finally, Windstrike have found that Observer Ward on bottom lane. 
as IG go very much dark on the map. The creep wave is the only thing really giving them vision outside their own base, but still, they decide they're going to invis Moonlight Shadow Walk underneath the Observer and the Sentry. Looking for a kill that seems questionable after you just lost your Observer and Sentry in the same position. They really just want to try to take a fight while Weaver's dead. But Wind Strike's not giving it to them. They're just gonna wait. They're like, well, we have two lanes that are pushing in all the time, both mid and top. So if they're not dealing with this, sooner or later they're gonna have to go back. Yep. They can just sit here and wait. Actually, Silent right now is taking a little bit of a risk farming that Ancient Camp, but his teammates were nearby with the eventual swap, so probably would have been safe either way. They're just waiting for next Roshan, probably. And now they should or, be getting some info. Well, they got two and a half minutes before Roshan could spawn. Looks like uh, Always Wanna Fly might want to go for a smoke maneuver and catch the Invictus Gaming side in their base when they start pushing out top. He was drawing some sort of a... Line on the map. Well, they are grouped up, but no smoke. Not yet. They are lined up for it. Still working on items defensive for IG. It's a Crimson Guard that SRF is dreaming you can complete one day. There's smoke. Alright. So they use Iceberg as the front liner. Pretty damn tanky, 2.8k. He's actually hitting himself. That was that was 500 as well for the Invoker. What's he get? He's getting plus 86 from Precision Aura. And he's got his Alacrity buff up too. So they're smoked up. Mirana revealed. Wraith King as well. Wraith breaks the smoke, but they swap in. They want an aggressive. He'll manager and then leap back up again. SRO's in pretty deep, but then the Lincolns. It protected the Vengeful Spirit and the time lapse. It comes in once more. Agadim's buffed up. An easy quick save. SRF has no way to run back out this one. And even when the Agadim's upgraded Shaman Wards, which were problematic for Windstrike, it's not enough to cause that many problems. And Cataclysm. Just leveled up. Use it instantly. Everyone splits and for IG, though. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, they got the Wraith King dead for a minute. That's uh, more than enough of an opening for Windstrike. Just to go up. Yep, healing everybody up nicely with the Vessel and with the Soul Rip. And Iceberg's gonna save one last Vessel charge to use offensively with Cold Snap. Mm -hmm. But no Mass Serpent Wards, no Reaper's Scythe, <laughs> yeah, no Moonlight another, Shadow. Another Reaper that... I get where they were coming from trying to get the Venge, but they, they used it too early anyway. And yep. there was the Axe Weaver. I don't know if they noticed that one, though. It, it was the first time it was used, right? Yeah. It was. Uh, Gust over on to Silent. Tries to actually break free. He's just standing his ground. Doesn't have that much to work with, uh, apart from his team. His team still actually a lot to work with. Yep, that was another Axe time lapse. So Silent got back to full. For Boca. Spirit Vessel's on him, four staffs up. They've got the dust revealed just in case he has any kind of invis. And Bobak almost being pushed out of the map, out of the game. He can stay in the tournament for now, but uh, when Strike likes to push a little bit harder to get him out of that. But two full lanes of racks down and the tier three tower on bottom. Shrine's already gone. They can come back for the 40 minute bounty runes. And the, the elite. This just seems to happen again. Like it happened in game one. You were commenting about it. You just have this huge shift in the way of, of wind strike. This isn't as uh, powerful as game one, but just feels like we've hit that point where IG is totally locked out of playing in this game. It came around the Roche move again. Like wind strike go to the Roche, they get it for free. Then IG are like, oh, let's fight them. And they go in, in the middle of the map, try to jump the guy who has Aegis and just get a horrible fight out of it. It's been the same play in both games and that's really been one of the defining moments in both of the victories that we're assuming when Strike are going to win this game by now. <laughs> it's very unlikely they lose. Oh, wait, where's my win probability? We're at 99%. All right. The last 1% is... I don't know. The ultimate throw. I don't know what the last percent is. Uh, does it change with Roshan going their way? No, it still says 99%. This is Aegis Cheese and Refresher, and it's Invoker who's holding the Refresher for the moment. The he actually doesn't have a slob for it. 1%'s got to be Iceberg running down mid and breaking his items or something. <laughs> I denied all my items. I don't know how it happened. Ask KYXY. I wonder what would happen to the win percentage if he just broke all his items, actually. What it would say. That would be... Do it for science. Yeah. 
I denied for science. <laughs> Our range is bumped up again. My Their net worth advantage is more than Now your jump home. comes in. The swap inside. There's still not enough. Here's the Weaver they aim for. He'll do self. Time lapse back out. Goodbye, Necro. Goodbye, Ray King. That's a second life of his. And really, goodbye, Invictus Gaming. They've lost three heroes. GG is the call. And win strike. They didn't have a good start for today. But they end beautifully with a 2-0. Wow indeed, LD.